But coming up next year on Ghana tonight, the Electoral Commission is set to exhibit the vote, the provisional voters register again after correcting errors, pointing out the issues that came up as a result of what the NDDC put out. And uh, it's one thing that we've been following quite closely. Uh, they had already given an indication of what they intend to do going forward. And then also uh, the errors that the NDC had, um, had pointed out in this first provisional register that was exhibited. The NPP had also indicated they had found some errors as well and they were going to present it to the Electoral Commission. But then again, the NDC was quite vocal on this matter. And this is what we're going to come in, coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. And um, let's engage a bit further on this matter because earlier today, the Electoral Commission put out a press statement, and we have portions of that statement is going to be on your screen right now. Electoral Commission makes the point about the re-exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register. And you recall that they had given this notice on the 1st of October when they issued the press statement that they were going to re-exhibit the Provisional Voters Register online. So this is just to reinforce the point that from tomorrow, October 15, and the, to the end of Saturday, October 19, 2024, they are going to re-exhibit the provisional voters register that contains the corrections of the errors that the NDC pointed out within this period. So from Tuesday, 15 October, voters can check the details via short code star 711 star 51 hash, free of charge. So this is the USSD code they're using. Voters can also check their details from the website that's, and they give the website there, ec.gov.gh. Click on the pop-up link and at the bottom right corner of the screen and enter the 10-digit voter ID number to receive the ID, the, that's the voter registration details. Also, the public should note that the, any discrepancies identified must be reported to the district office of the commission where they are registered uh, voters for correction. Once the re-exhibition exercise ends, the online re-exhibition exercise ends on Saturday, 19th October, voters will still be able to check their details online, but cannot, and take a be, notice of this, you cannot request for correction of their details. So even though you can continue checking your details after the 19th, you cannot request for correction. And the political parties are required to use the template provided by the commission to them to submit any discrepancies identified during the re-exhibition period. So bear in mind, this re-exhibition of the voters register that purportedly captures the corrected errors that the NDC identified is going to be exhibited online and, and not offline as the NDC was also proposing. So you do this USSD code, and then you go online, click the link, and then it's going to happen. So it's starting from tomorrow. But there are concerns about, for instance, the hard-to-reach communities and other parts of this country where there's no mobile phone connectivity. How can they take part in this online re-exhibition to check if there are errors as well? And then all the issues that has to do with even those who, who have smartphones and they want to go online, they have their own challenges. Those who want to use the USSD code as well, you don't have mobile connectivity in some of these areas across the country. That's going to be a limitation as well. And, and, and Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer is a deputy director of ITL elections for the NDC. He's, he's going to be joining us um, on Zoom in a bit. But just take a look at what um, how things are playing out from tomorrow. Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer is joining us right now. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, good evening, Alfred. Let me say good evening to your cherished viewers and all our brethren across the country. Great. Now, uh, under normal circumstances, you're supposed to have the provisional voters register that is supposed to be re-exhibited or that is expected to be re-exhibited tomorrow by now, right? Do you have the PVR that should be re-exhibited tomorrow online? Alfred, we, we don't have the provisional voter register as of now. I mean, uh, the, before I left office, we're still making frantic effort uh, to see if the Electoral Commission could send us a, 
the, the provisional register as uh, agreed at the last IPAC meeting. Uh, in fact, at the last IPAC meeting, it was agreed that they will give us the provisional register uh, within uh, two weeks or earlier. We later requested for it, and they came out with a statement that uh, they indicated two weeks and that we should give them time within the two weeks for them to give us a provisional register. So today, when they issued a statement, and that tomorrow they will be exhibiting the register, and then uh, with all the its attendant uh, antecedents and all that, we thought they would have given us a register because you have not given the political, I don't know, of other parties, but I can speak for my party, the NDC. We have not received the provisional register, and yet they are going ahead to do the exhibition tomorrow. So I then mean, what are, are you going problems? to use to check? to identify the errors if you don't have it? That is a, que that, that is a question, Alfred. That is a big question that uh, I believe this question is for the goals. Because they gave us a letter on Friday, and in the letter, they attach uh, the template to be used to collate the discrepancies if we identify some uh, in the provisional register. So I was laughing at them and saying, these people, you have not given us a register, and you have already given us a template to collate the, the discrepancies. Are you trying to say that you are anticipating some discrepancies in your provisional register you are going to give us? So we thought maybe over the weekend they would have given us a register. They didn't. And today we've been in the office, I left office very late, but still uh, the register was not available. But we have IPAC meeting tomorrow, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll take it up with them over there to find out what is the rationale behind that. Giving us a template without the register, and then you've gone further to announce that you are going to exhibit it. Uh, uh, online, but we still will have challenge with the online issues. I see, yes. Yeah. So then you, do you have or see any merit in those concerns raised about this online re-exhibition which starts tomorrow, especially those who are in areas where uh, there's no mobile phone connectivity or coverage or, or, or network reach as well, and other attendant issues? Is, 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 that, is that one that you identify with as a party and you're going to raise tomorrow at this IPAC meeting? Yes, Alfred. In fact, this their online thing is much ado about nothing. Because how many people understand this online thing in this country? My people in the rural communities, I'm from a rural area, and I can tell you three quarters of my people over there, they don't understand anything about online. They will not even go, they don't even understand how are they even going to do it. Imagine the, the, the rural uh, populace, they don't understand this. This short quoting they have put in there, they don't understand it. And so, in fact, you are going to cut off a lot of voters from accessing the, their details. It's, it's, it's not going to work. It's much ado about nothing. I mean, they are just trying to, to whitewash the process and get away with it. And that's why we are telling them that, look, they shouldn't even bring the matter of cost because, look, democracy itself is costly. And they know it. We've been telling them. I mean, if you want Ghanaians to participate fully in this exhibition thing that you are talking about, you don't go this tangent. That is why our electoral system is, look, it's manual. It's fully manual. Everything about electoral, if you look at the framers of our 1992 constitution, they were very clear in their mind. They knew that, look, the illiteracy rate in this country is so small that you cannot introduce e-voting or e-collation or e-transmission, not to talk of now going e-exhibition. So you see, the electoral commission is gradually trying to introduce some electronic thing into our electoral system, which is not applicable per law. That is not what the framers of our constitution envisage. And so for them going this tangent, I think they must be stopped somewhere. Because it's just not the best. Going e-exhibition. E right. We haven't gone there yet. Unless we rightly said, look, there are communities, if you go up north, there are okay. certain communities you don't get mobile network at all completely, Alfred. Mm, There's see. no never, mobile tech, uh, this, uh, network over there. Sometimes before you make call, you have to climb a tree. <laughs> Even a tall tree to stand on top of a tree in order to access a, a network to make call. And so, such a community, what do you expect them to do? And when you are bringing e-exhibition, what are they going to do? How are they going to access their data? Well, there are those who identify with this concerns indeed. So you go into this IPAC meeting tomorrow. Let's see how things play out. We will be there. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ashitanko. Very well. Appreciate I'm it. I'm grateful. It's the Deputy Director of ITN Elections for the NDC. And th that concern about the... Um, lack of education on the usage of the ussd code that has been provided ahead of tomorrow the exercise of the online re-exhibition starts tomorrow plus these areas that don't have network connection is also another matter but we hit the streets earlier today and um in fact um, a number of you shared your concerns with us 
But let's go straight into our People's Voice segment for tonight. Well, so Emmanuel Samani is uh, somewhere in the capital right now. He's connecting with us, um, with a number of people who are with him right now to share their thoughts on the People's Voice segment on this matter of the online re-exhibition of the voters registered by the Electoral Commission. Samani, what are they telling you? Well, thank you very much, Alfred. Good evening and welcome to the People's Voice. From the Oxford Street in Accra, I am Emmanuel Samani. And as you know, according to the Electoral Commission, they would begin the re-exhibition of the voter register from tomorrow up until Saturday. Now, here's a twist. It's not going to be in person. Rather, it's going to be online via uh, the portal or a USSD. So we're on the streets of Accra to find out what people make of this move by the Electoral Commission to digitalize the re-exhibition of the voter register. So let's pick some thoughts right here, right now. So Chief, many thanks for your time. Uh, the EC, as usual, uh, are saying that this time around, the yeah, re-exhibition is going to be online. What do you make of it? Well, uh, to me, I think uh, Ghana is not yet there. Because uh, as we all know, a lot of people are computer illiterate. So to do the exhibition uh, via a, a, a short code or on the, on the, on the internet, it would deprive a lot of people from actually checking or going to actually see if their names are on the register. I would have preferred the EC done it uh, the normal way, the way we used to know, so that many people can go and then uh, check their, their names on the register. I think that's all right. Thank you very much. Let's uh, pick some more thoughts on this move by the EC. Uh, let me just quickly engage this gentleman. Many thanks for your time, sir. You're live on Ghana tonight. Now, the Electoral Commission says they are doing their re-exhibition online via a website and via a USSD code. What do you make of this? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this, but I think that's another way of um, they're trying to steal the, another election again because, I mean, think about this. How many people do you think they have access to this, whatever they're trying to do? I mean, I don't want to say, I don't want to bring it in out of numbers, but the population here is only few people. I know this, you know, we are into this social media and everything, or whatever, whatever. People are now getting to that type of stuff, but how many people do you think they, they, they're going to have access to this kind, of, this kind of stuff? I mean, I feel like that's another way of uh, finding a way to steal an election. And I think that's African for you. You know, Africa, you know, you know, they do things and they get away with it. You know, I mean, I want to know, the thing I want to know is when do they come out with this? Because if you're going to come out with this, then you have to talk about this maybe two, three years from now, before, you know, but you can't just come out and say you're going to do this type of stuff. It doesn't make no sense to me. But I mean, you know, usually some of the issues that come, out, come, out, come with uh, this in-person has to do with like time, but in, in this case, you can be in the comfort of your home, your own space. Yeah, I, I, get, I get that. I get, I get that one. But like I said, how many people do you think have access to that? There's a lot of people here in this country that they don't even know how to access this mobile phone and stuff. Hmm. Manuel Somani then, and th those concerns are shared by a number of you as well online. And I thank you so much for the people's voice as always. Make a date and have your voice and have a say in what we say here on Ghana tonight. 